Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Today is September 17th, 2020. I'm your host, Arusha Paris, and today we have David Ryan returning back to the show. David was a longtime portfolio manager for William J. O'Neill, the founder of Investors Business Daily. And he was also a longtime hedge fund manager on his own. And of course, he was featured in the Market Wizards book. Thanks for being here, David. Arusha, thanks. It's always a pleasure to be uh, with you, with uh, back with O'Neill and Company and IBD and Market Smith. Love the products. On today's podcast, we are going to talk about the current markets. We will talk about signs of t- uh, stock topping, and we will end the episode with a few current ideas. Uh, so let's get into the current market. Uh, the market is in an uptrend under pressure. Uh, we have three distribution days on the NASDAQ, six on the S&P 500. David, what are your thoughts about this market? Well, I, yeah, it's, it's really every day you're getting a little bit more evidence that the, the leadership is changing and changing dramatically. And what I'm seeing is, is a lot of stocks that led from that market low back in, in March mm-hmm. are really starting to underperform. And, and all, you know, a lot of that is stocks that have had huge runs. And so it's, it's, it's very normal that the market after a huge move, I think I, I, think I wrote it down a bit off the bottom, the S and P was up 64% and the, uh, the NASDAQ 100 was 80 up 84% off the bottom. So you get Incredible. moves like that and you've got to expect some kind of, some kind of pullback. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, that we're going to turn, it's going to turn into what happened in February through March, but I think we can have, we could probably come in another, you know, maybe another 10% move, uh, move it back to, um, in that NASDAQ composite back down to, um, to where it, it broke out in, um, uh, what is that? In, in June. Yeah, we're there. I think you go back over down to, there, right? yeah, down to that area which is, um, you know, about, I guess, 10,000, 10,200 or so. And, and yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe it can go a little bit farther, but, um, and that, that would be very, very normal, especially when the, when you've got such excessive returns, you've got so much money coming into the market. I mean, you get a combination of the fed, uh, with zero interest rates, you get everybody getting $1,200 with nothing to do. And they all start, a lot of that money found its way into the marketplace. A lot of people, and since they didn't have any, any games to bet on, a lot of that money came into the market right. and people started day trading. I mean, I heard stories of, of, you know, friends of friends who had never, ever been involved with the market start buying and selling stocks all the time. And I'm going, gosh, yeah, I would never think of that person ever getting involved in the market. And when I heard stuff like that, I started going, we, we gotta be getting close to the end. Um, so there's, and, and, you know, and now what is starting to happen is that, okay, some of these things are starting to underperform and you got basketball games going now, you got football yeah. games going now, yeah. you got <laughs> baseball going now, hockey. <laughs> You've got a ton of things. I mean, I don't bet on any of these sports uh, games, but uh, hey, is some of that money going to no longer be involved in the market? They're going to go back to what they know or what they've done in the past, and they're going to get involved in that again. So maybe some of the money comes out of that. You also have the election coming up. That's, that's always overhanging. Who's going to be the next president? Who's going to control the Congress? Uh, so you start getting a lot of uncertainties and that just leads to, um, you know, to probably, you know, lower prices. And, but, you know, even without coming up with all these reasons why I think the market could pull in, I got to let the market talk. And when I look at a lot of the stocks that led, they're no longer leading. Um, they don't rally like they used to. They're starting to break moving averages. And, um, they're coming down on volume. You're starting to see some cyclical starting to pick up and that's never really a good sign. I, it, I mean, especially for growth players, it's, it's probably the worst of, of, of all worlds because 
your growth is underperforming. It, it hurts your stomach to buy a cyclical stock or something turning. It breaks a lot of rules and you don't want to, you don't want to start moving your style to something else. Right. So it can be a very, very frustrating time. And that's why I said, I, I put out a tweet, uh, which I, I only do every few weeks um, that I said, it's time. It looks like it's time to, with all the volatility, climactic runs, it's time to cut back and really raise a lot of cash. And that's what I've done over the last, you know, two or three, four weeks. Yeah. And, and that was like right near the, when, when it got, the, it got crazy, the, the market where a number of these cloud stocks, I think that was probably right after when Zoom reported earnings, a number yeah. of the other cloud stocks really started to run and it was, it was one day kind of euphoria right there. And, and then after that, it, it, it's, uh, a number of them gave all those gains back. Yeah, because when we look at some of these charts and um, as, as you put up the triple Qs, it, what, what happens is the market's going up at a certain rate like this, and then it starts, it starts going <laughs> up almost vertically. Yeah. It doesn't happen often, and usually when you do that, that's usually the end of the move. I always, I always like to relate it to uh, if you've ever seen an air show or a picture of these, uh, a film of a, you know, a plane coming very close along a runway and then it turns up and it starts going straight up. Well, it can only go straight up for a certain period of time before it starts stalling. And that's what is happening right now. Now, uh, now with the... Uh... Now, now you're seeing some some of the excessive action, excessive behavior happening now, and the, the market is starting to come in. Yeah, it still takes uh, a lot of discipline to have have kind of to have the ability to stand aside and not be tempted uh, that much to 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 move in. Yeah, you know, well, what what are some of the tips that that you can share that uh, helps you kind of stay on the on the sideline? Is that just experience, or is it rules? Um, well, that's, that's following your rules. I mean, if you can't find bases to buy off of, I mean, I, I, there are very few stocks that have a nice four five week, six week base that are starting to move out, especially in, in the growth area. Yeah. A lot of these are, they're coming down yeah. and they're, and it's going to take a lot of time. And I, I think the other thing too, is I think people, have gotten um, so wrapped up in the market and they're, they're almost getting used to these parabolic moves that, that it's almost, I, I don't want to say it, it's almost like a drug. You know, it's that, it's that adrenaline rush when you buy a stock on a pullback or coming out of a base and all of a sudden the thing's up 30% in a matter of three or four weeks, you're going, I, I got to get more of that. Right. I don't think that's, I think we've, we've passed the, you know, we've, we've, I, and we feel strongly that we peak uh, past that peak of maximum uh, acceleration on some stocks. I mean, maybe you'll get some news on some, but for most stocks, I think people have got to almost back off and and bring their expectations down because you know for months now it's like it's like go 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 go. Mm -hmm. Where's the next one? Let's get the next one. Let's move to this one. Let's you know and. As I said, I, I saw that in 2000, in those first three months, you know, the end of 1999 into, into 2000. And, um, and it only lasts for a, a brief period of a time. You got to make the most at, w when that's going on. But when it's over, boy, you got to, I, I would just cut back, raise some cash. If you, if you want to keep going, trade with a, a smaller amount of your capital at this point. And wait, and you know, maybe maybe the whole thing shapes up again six weeks from now, or and maybe after the election. Yeah. But you just, as as Bill always said, is that you take it a day at a time, and you just you sway with which way the wind is is blowing. And right now, I mean, even you know, with today, the market got hit again. Yes, it came back, but it's you know, in the past, it would come all the way back on a day like this. It would open down two or 300, then it would be up on the day. That's a really good point. Now yeah. we did come back, but we were still down a percent and a half. And so, and what, and usually tops are a process. It takes time for a top because, because people, 
their expectations are so high. Boy, I, I, I can get this, I can buy this pullback and all of a sudden that pullback doesn't work like it did before. Yeah. And then they try it again and then it doesn't work. And Bali about the third time is when the market really rolls over. So I think we're probably in our, you know, first or second pullback and maybe we got we have another move back up not to highs but back into moving averages and then then we come off even more and then one more sell off to really shake out people yes yeah and, and we really reset the whole thing um, yeah it's it's and then yeah as we go through some of these stocks you'll see but a lot of the leaders is when you're when you're looking at the sell side you you always want to be looking for change you, and so when the stocks are going along at a certain level and then they accelerate like they did and like the, the triple Qs did, mm -hmm. that's change. And that's change telling you people have gotten too, too excited. The next thing you see is you start seeing where stocks trade higher and close lower and you see a pickup in volume. Yes. And if you, I don't know if you, if you would bring up that, uh, if you can bring up that triple Q chart again, is that you'll see just a, a week ago that that you got three very very large days of volume on the downside and yeah you can see big break on volume that is that is different see how it was how the how the triple q's were going up in a very orderly channel and then it had that acceleration and then it broke that and it broke it on huge volume Yes. And when I see that, and I see the biggest volume that's traded on the downside uh, that has occurred throughout that entire rally, that's just a big piece of evidence that we're, we've got more downside or we've got more time uh, to, to build bases. And, but then you got it three days in a row. And if you look at that whole run from the bottom, you never got three big days in a row on the downside during that entire move. So that's, I've, I've, I've found that if, in, when you get a rally that's been that consistent, it usually ends with something like this with three huge down days and on volume. And that's what we've got. And then we tried to rally. We rallied back into, you know, a lot of people are looking at the 21 day exponential moving average. Mm -hmm. A lot of these stocks moved into that. Yep. And a few got back above them. A lot of them didn't. And then this chart is, I guess, a, a day a day old. Well, now we've now broken through. That's right. We were, right day, we're down below the 50-day moving average. Yeah. And so, and look look at the pickup on volume. Yes. Yes. Another big pickup in volume. Yes, you traded and you closed mid-range, but you were still down a percent and a half on this index. And uh, the, other th the other thing that you can see there is the relative strength of, of this index, the relative strength line. If you could, uh, I, I don't know if you could, but it looks like we're just about to break, uh, or we already broke a, an uptrend in that relative strength line. And that's, that's a bit of evidence that this is starting to underperform. And the reason why I'm, I'm stressing so much of the triple Qs is so many of the big leaders were found in this index. Yes. And yep. so you're starting to get, that's, that's starting to happen. Um, so a lot of evidence um, leading into that. And the other, the, the last thing too is on, on the individual stocks, it's the same thing with the market when they're in a steady climb and then they start getting very volatile, moving around very, very in, in dramatic fashion, many wide points spring, uh, string, wide point moves, uh, that's, that's a sign of increased volatility. And, um, and it's a sign of wide and loose patterns that Bill would also refer to. It. And, and why, why is volatility in wide and loose? Why, for those of you who are especially new, why is that, a bad sign. Well, it's just you have big moves up, big moves down. When a stock is in a nice uptrend, they don't have these huge moves up. Or, or even if they have those strong moves up, they usually then consolidate and move tightly sideways. Mm -hmm. And then they move up again. It's almost like a staircase. They go sideways and up, sideways and up. And now what's happening is that that 
staircase is getting very, very choppy, very ragged, and there's no more of that control. And that, that control is usually the big buyers who aren't, uh, the big buyers who have bought aren't selling as it's moving higher, but then when we get to very extended, then you start seeing the big money coming in and, and uh, liquidating some of their position. Perfect, yeah, no, and so, the, the markets right now, they are under pressure. So you definitely want to make sure you are uh, protecting yourself and being disciplined. Don't force it at this point. Uh, make sure you are, know where your exit strategies are for any of these stocks. Let's take a quick break. But when we return, we will talk more about this. We'll go over more examples of stocks that have more volatility and could be potentially putting in at least a short-term top. We'll be back. MarketSmith's once a year free access event is going on now. Now through September 20th, you can try MarketSmith for free. No credit card is required. In less than 30 seconds, you can get access to all of the premium MarketSmith features, including our pattern recognition feature and our stocks breaking out alerts. I've been using MarketSmith for years as my go-to stock research, and many of the guests on this podcast are MarketSmith subscribers too. So if you haven't used MarketSmith before, now's your chance to try it out for free and see what you've been missing. Go to investors.com slash msfreeaccess2020 to get instant access. Once again, that's investors.com slash msfreeaccess2020. David Ryan is our guest on Investing with IBD, sponsored by Market Smith. Okay, David, let's uh, let's talk more about when stocks get into trouble, and and we have a number more annotations here to go through as examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my screen again, and uh, for those of you who are listening uh, to this, when you get home, you definitely want to go to investors.com/podcast and uh, check out these annotations because. David marked up a number of charts on a number of stocks that, that were doing pretty well in this market for the last five months. And he's highlighting an, an, a bunch of clues that were kind of showing the character changing on these stocks. So the first one that we have up here is Atlassian. The ticker symbol is TEAM, T-E-A-M. And David, why don't you uh, walk us through this one? Yeah, well, what you're seeing up there at, at the top, which is a little bit different than before, is the stock went to new high ground, and it, it then it quickly got hit. And it got hit on, uh, you can see down the bottom of the chart, down on, on big volume. And then it rallied again, and it got hit again on, on some more volume, even gap down in price. Um, you can see the, the red line that's, that's going through the chart. That is the 50-day moving average. And now that it broke, got back above it, and then broke again, and then got back above it the third yes. time. Yeah. But look where the relative strength line is. Which is that the blue line here. Yeah. yeah, that blue line. Look where the relative strength line is. Even though the stock went to new high ground, the relative strength line was so far away from the highs that it, it first hit when it was up at uh, you know, 198. And uh, that's just showing you that it's starting to underperform the market and just gets hit again. See, when, when I see that much volatility, I just start staying away from a stock that looks like that. Yeah. And now it's living below the 50-day moving, uh, moving average. Yeah, the other thing that's important too is when it went it went from the lows from that 160 area up to 200 and it did it on really only one day of increased volume yes. or at least volume that was above the 50 day moving average uh, average daily volume so, yeah i remember I, I clearly remember this day when when that you know that small volume increase when it jumped back through the 50 day i was just shocked i was like wow atlassian's trying to go right now and and, it, and when all these other stocks are starting to struggle a little bit and it was almost as if the market was trying to get more people interested in this so then they could you know slowly get out of more atlassian and reduce their exposure to cloud stocks yeah and that's that's it's a great example of why you don't buy a stock coming off the low and going right into new high ground because it's it's gone from you know 160 to 200 yep and 
and that's you know that's a 25 percent increase in a matter of like six or seven days what it should do at that point is then start drifting sideways if it was going to keep on going but it kind of ran out of gas and then it has as quickly corrected back down and so this is just a stock on in you know on my list to avoid and uh, there's even um well you said down on big volume down at the bottom oh, you know I, I yeah those are actually <laughs> earnings that are starting yeah. to slow from 40 percent down to 19 and 25 still pretty good but it's it's not the 40 50 percent that it was reporting in the in the past exactly yeah that, and that is a good point i i totally messed up on the 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 annotation right here but yeah you could see the earnings from a couple of quarters ago in the September quarter of last year and the December quarter, 40%, 48%. So that average was around 44%. And now 19%, 25%. And so earnings are slowing down. And, and so a lot of times when the, these companies aren't growing as fast as they used to, that's when a number of these funds will start to try to lighten up on them. Okay, good. Uh, let's go to the next one right here. And this is Amazon. Now Amazon, yeah, a favorite. Now look at now look at that uptrend. The, we have that um, uptrend line, that dotted line going along, and and see this is where it changes happening, where it breaks that and it breaks it on two days on big big volume, and and that other the the other thing is that look at the relative strength line non confirmation that we highlighted. The stock went into new high ground and and did it by you know by a few hundred points but right. the stock itself the, the, the it, it, relative to the s p 500 wasn't as strong as it was in the past and so that's i i actually put a lot more weight into the relative strength line than i do the relative strength number the number is great for screening but there there are times where you can get a relative strength number of 99 and the stock is 50% off its highs because it right. had a big move. But the great thing about the relative strength line is it, it's against the S&P 500, which is a constant comparison. So, um, so that's, so you can see it's breaking there. And then, then below right, right near the price is the 50 day moving average. And that broke for the first time. I mean, here's a, here's a stock that moved from, you know, 2000 to, you know, 3,500. 3, yep. And so that's, you know, for a company that size, that's a, that's a huge move. And so you, that, this is where you should be, I mean, on that, on that trend line break, on the relative strength line break, uh, the pickup and volume, that's where you should have uh, started to decrease your position. I mean, uh, you might still like it long term and there's nothing wrong with that. I and mean, this has been a tremendous stock for a long time, but you just don't want a huge concentrated position at this point. It's time to raise some cash, look for some other opportunities. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and a lot of times there are all these going to be little subtle clues. It's not always going to be obvious when these stocks start to fall out of favor. So uh, these are really, really uh, important data points that you want to take a look at uh, because it's, it's, it's been happening over the last few weeks. Just giving clues that here goes another leader out of favor, another leader and data dog. He, he, here's uh, another one that was a little bit more obvious uh, when, when it really started getting out of favor, but walk us through this one, David. Yeah, uh, one thing I, I should have highlighted, well, just so you can see the comparison, maybe you can put your pointer down there, is yeah. when the stock first came out at 50, when it started moving higher, look at the huge volume that that stock traded as it was going through that first run. I mean, it went from, yep. you know, I guess, mid 40s up to 70 and then did not give much back. Yes. And then started another move up to up to 90 and is ultimately it got almost I guess it almost got to 100 and um, and then what you'll see is that is also the relative strength line was broken near you know at, on that first move down from 100 That's and then yeah. and then the stock started coming back mm -hmm. and um, and, and the relative strength, it got close to its old highs, but the relative strength line didn't, you know, didn't get back to where it was before. 
and then it breaks again and breaks on huge volume. And then it starts living below the 50 day moving average, uh, the, the red line. And I know today it, it was back, I think it was back down again. Um, well, it's still sitting on top of the, the 50 day, even after it, after it pulled back. Um, but so this is, this is one I would be careful with uh, if, if you own it. If it started going back below that 50 day moving average again, I would, you know, I'd probably lighten up on the position because a big run, lots of volatility, yep. moving average, 50 day moving average, moving over. Um, you know, maybe it'll stay above there, but I would, I would just be very, very careful uh, at this point. Perfect. Uh, let's go to Okta and uh, the ticker symbol is OKTA. And uh, uh, well, yeah, what, what, what do you see here? I see here also another, a, another very large move. I mean, off the, off the bottom, this was, I guess, uh, mid uh, 88 is, is the price it, there. Yeah. Yep. And, and got all the way up to, to you know, 231. I mean, that's a, right. almost a threefold move or let's say a two and a half four full move. And that's, that's one other thing I, I'd like to point out is that as these moves go on, the farther that move gets without a proper base and a nice long base, the higher your risk goes. So it's something that you should always keep in mind as a stock moves along um, that you know, it's, it's, you know, how many stocks double in price, how many triple in price, when you get any more than that, you have to start saying, boy, it's, 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 you know, we're just pushing the envelope of, of, you know, how far a stock can go in, in a bull market move. And so this is that example. It got way out there. Also, I'm highlighting that relative strength line breaking again. Yep. Even even as the stock is making new highs, the, amazing, yeah. the relative strength line is actually in a downtrend. And that's just telling you it's no longer the leader that it once was. And it's just, it's, I mean, you, maybe you don't have to sell it right there, but it's a flag that's telling you that leadership is probably waning on this one. And you'll start seeing, look at the volume pickup. Now you you got a bunch of arrows there. Those are way above average daily volume, and some of the biggest volume on the downside since since that stock started making uh, making its move, uh, you know, in in the 140 area. So when you see the big volume pickup, you see a change in character. Its relative strength is starting to lag. That's about the time where you have to start saying you know, let's look elsewhere or let's, let's reduce the position and not keep pushing at it. So now, now you're down below, you're below the 50 day. And I think you're, it's, you know, today, today, well, today it actually closed up, but it's, you know, it, the stock was as low as 185, closed at 194. That's so it, it did have a, it did come back, but you're below the 50 day. And, you know, only good things happen when you're above the 50 day. Below right. the 50 day, it's you just got to be a lot more cautious. Let's go to uh, one last example. This is uh, Fortinet, and Fortinet. this one, yeah, it, it was pretty amazing. I, I I actually tried this one at the the breakout when it when it was starting to go around around here, but uh, it it just didn't end up uh, working very well. And yeah. It just had a very fast move, uh, yeah. you know, real good move from 110 to 140 off off a breakout, but um, and then even up from you know 70, it went to 140, so it That's doubled right. off yeah. the lows. Yep. And and then look how this is just chopping all over the place. It cannot get anywhere, and it's it's hard to see. But the well, the relative strength line is also not confirming that last high at 151. Yes. Um, and then, then you get starting to get some big volume spikes, especially off the, the high of 151, that first arrow is showing you that's, that's the, one of the biggest volumes on the downside that you've had in that time. And this is what you usually see at, 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 when a stock starts a downtrend, is you see price breaks on big volume like it did at that first arrow. And then it comes back up and it starts wedging and it's wedging up, a proper base should be going sideways to down. 
this is this is wedging up and it's doing it on lighter volume the volume is actually drying up as this is trying to rally and then it breaks again and it gets some big volume on the downside it wedges again and then it breaks and now it's now it's it's wedging again and um and today i know it was off it was yeah it's it it was off uh a percent and uh and on some pretty good volume and so what what is so interesting and this is i've always said this if you really want to get to know the different phases of a stock's move is is get is is just pull up a market smith chart of the of a, of a, a great winning stock and you can take any of the big winners from now that have started to roll over and you compare what goes on in in its basing process in its big move process i mean Mark Minervini calls it stage one, stage two, stage three is the top and stage four. And if you draw a line right down where that high price is and you compare the left side of the chart with the right side of the chart, it acts entirely different. And it's fast moves when you're going up, it's fast moves up and it's drifting, fast moves up and drifts. When it hits a peak, comes down fast and it rallies very begrudgingly. And it breaks again and rallies a very slow, bad rally on lighter volume and then it breaks again. So the whole thing, totally, it's like total opposites from one side of the chart to the other. Yeah, David, one, one thing that I, when I was listening to you at the Masters Tra uh, Trader Program, which uh, is, is going to be happening in November. This is uh, Mark Minervini's program. David is one of the speakers there. He's been, uh, been doing it for many, many years. But one thing uh, that I've heard you talk about at, at the, the event uh, is you can, and I, I love this phrase, you can almost see the cup with handle within the volume. Uh, and so, so talk a little bit more about that because I found that really fascinating and, and you're correct. Well, when, when a stock is going through a proper move or it's setting up, you'll actually see you know, the, the, volume, the volume rising as, as it's coming up to an old high. And then as it goes through its cup process, then the volume should be drying up and then it should be increasing again. And you can actually just almost trace that out in the volume itself. And then in the handle, when the handle should be tight and very small price range, the volume should contract and be very, very small. And then when it comes out of that, then you'll see an explosion in that volume again. So you can see these patterns in the volume and you can see I mean, it's the same patterns you're seeing in, in the price. They should correspond. No, that, that's excellent. And, and one, one last question before we take a break here, David. Uh, I, you know, I, I know this is a question on many people's minds, but why only two screens behind you? Oh, why only two screens? Well, I, you know, I, I, I am envious of, of, of Jim Ropel. Every time I, you have him on, I mean, he's got this massive display and I sort of have screen envy. I should probably get at least, I have two Macs here and I should probably get, you know, two more up here <laughs> so I can compete with him. But uh, I, I think, I think I, two is probably enough. I mean, I mean, I'm already using glasses now for reading and looking at some of these charts because I've, I've looked at this for so many decades. But um, yeah, you know, hopefully one of, one of these days I can match Jim's, uh, Jim's giant tower of screens. Okay, Jim. So there you go. There, there's a challenge. You might have a competitor soon with, with, uh, with the number of screens. So knowing when to push it in the market and also knowing when not to push it uh, can make a, a difference between having a good year and a great year. So we're going to take a break, but coming up next, we're going to talk about uh, a few ideas that are setting up in this rotation that, uh, you know, there, there, there might be some out there. Uh, and also we will have a little show and tell uh, David will take us back, uh, way back when, and show us some pretty cool things uh, uh, in the podcast for the, the third segment. So stay tuned. Market Smith will give you a huge edge in the stock market. Better stocks, bigger profits. Market Smith is the top research platform for IBD. It's just the best tool for individual stock selection. Everything within Market Smith is designed to bring those best stocks to the surface. It does a lot of the work for you of filtering down to the potential leaders. It's when you take the training wheels off and you're ready to invest on a more professional level. Market Smith will help you take control of your investment life. If you want to get serious about investing, start your membership today. 
We are back with David Ryan on Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Okay, David, let's get into a few ideas, and then we will uh, go into our show and tell part of the show. Uh, so let, let me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my MarketSmith screen. And now the first, the first stock that we're going to go over, let's go over Target. And so there have been a number of retail stocks that have uh that then holding up a uh, pr- pretty be- uh, pretty better pretty much better than a lot of the cloud stocks. But uh, what what do you see in this stock and uh, what looks uh, interesting well, to you? The one one thing I really liked is how this stock really tightened up right above 120. And there's you almost got a nice big. I mean that's like a six month seventh month uh, you know cup and handle going on in, in Target. And then it broke out of there. Didn't do it on a whole lot of volume, but then its earnings came through and they really did well in, in terms of their online presence. And uh, I, I think they're, the number of uh, products and, and the sales they had online jumped dramatically. And so this stock gapped up and now it's starting to build a base. It's not a big, it's, you know, again, it's not, it's not going to be a huge a huge winner, but it could be a nice steady one because it looks like it's, it's you know, Walmart and Target and Amazon and, and a few others that are the big players on the retail space while a lot of small people, small companies go out. So that's, that's, that's one to watch. Um, and again, relative strength, very good. Um, not, but it'll, I, I actually like to sometimes put in some bigger, slower names in my portfolio because if you get an entire an entire portfolio of, you know, IBD uh, 200, sorry, MarketSmith 250 stocks. Sometimes, I mean, yes. your <laughs> swings are so, I mean, you can't believe how much money you can right. make and how much money you can lose in a day yeah, so, when they're so. all going the same direction. So I like to sometimes, you know, pack it with a few slower names. So it's not all, uh, you know, high octane names. Yeah. And, and what's kind of interesting with, with this, after this massive gap up is, you know, that if you want to talk about uh, the volatility decreasing uh, versus some of those examples that you you showed us in yeah. the second segment, I mean, look how small and tight these uh, ranges are. Right, um, and, and so this is oh, but, yeah, and then and also look at the volume. Look what's happening. Yes, the volume. Yes. You, it looks like the only the only day that you got above average daily volume was actually on the upside, and all the other days. Are, are lighter volume days. And that's what you want to see in, in a stock that's in an uptrend. Because that, that's just telling you there are, you know, institutions and hedge funds and banks and mutual funds that make up a huge amount of the volume. And if they're not selling, that's a very good sign. And, and that's, you know, and that is kind of an interesting concept to, to go over. A lot of times when the volume decreases because no one's really want to sell, right? The selling pressure has decreased yes. at that time, right? Yeah, and, and, and the most important time where volume should come in is when the stock is starting its move. When it's breaking out, that's when you want to get the huge move. Or, you know, on a gap in earnings, you'll get a huge volume. But when a stock starts into a nice steady uptrend, then the volume doesn't have to be big every single day. It can be, it can be below average daily volume. I, and, and, but then if the volume starts picking up on the downside, that's a warning that money is leaving, is, is leaving the, the issue. I, I'm, I, I've used this analogy many times, but it's, it's like when a, a rocket is on the launch pad, it's like a stock that's in a base. And when it gets off that launch pad, it needs a huge amount of fuel to get it up and going. And that's, what sh- that's where you want to see the volume is on the liftoff. But once that stock is in orbit and it's in a nice uptrend, it doesn't take a whole lot to keep it going, just like it doesn't keep a whole lot to keep a spaceship going once it's in orbit. That's a really good analogy. Let's, uh, let's go to the, the second one here. And this is Dollar General, another uh, retail store. Yeah, now this is again bigger, slower. I mean, this this one is holding up very well. I mean, it's, relative strength is seventy eight. It's not a you know, it's not a true market leader and, and huge gains, but it's slow and it's steady, and that's what we might we might like slow and steady when you've got other stocks that are that are retreating, going down, and you can see a, a great pickup in in earnings in these last uh, in these last two quarters. 
That's right. And, um, and that they're helped with anytime there's any um, government subsidies or you know, money coming out from the government, uh, and they're talking about another one sometime soon, this is where a lot of the money goes into stores, uh, rural areas and stores yeah. like this, like Dollar General. So bigger, bigger, slower, but not, you know, okay, it's not gonna light the world on fire, but it could be a nice steady one. Let's go to the third stock. This is uh, Beyond Meat, ticker symbol B-Y-N-D. Now this was a leader before, I mean, it, or it started moving out. I mean, it was actually a leader of, uh, you know, over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then looks like it's starting to build a whole new base. The relative strength is starting to pick up. Um, and you'll see some great volume coming up on this, this right side. What would, what would be good is if it came up into this, you know, 160 area and then just started drifting sideways or even right here, if it just started drifting sideways for a week or two uh, and just held the, the gains off the bottom because I guess the lows were 121. Um, yes. That if it can just drift sideways while the market's thrashing around, tightens up and breaks out, that might, that might be a nice, a nice big stock you know, coming out of that base. And again, I, I actually like long bases uh, because it, you get a long base, lots of times you get a nice long move out of it. Yeah, and and uh, I, last time you you were on the podcast, uh, the the stock that you brought up was Generac, which was breaking out of a, a five year base, oh, yeah, and it yeah. went up, I think, a triple at that point. But Actually, let me pull, you, let me pull you, it up. Yeah, bring that up because there's a nice long base. I'll go to a weekly chart I, here. Yeah, get a yeah weekly. So. Yeah, and and so you, David, you were you were talking about around here, right there. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can see, and I, yeah, and it, that was coming out of a five-year base. Yeah, and it had had a terrific move. I mean, it went from sixty to a one hundred and twenty. Yep. And then we got the we got into the sell-off in um, uh, in February, March, April, and then built a, really a, kind of a cup and handle there. And then had another really nice move, 110 to almost 200. And it doesn't look like it's over. I mean, no. look, I, I, you know, I no. see, you know, three weeks ago, it got some volume on the downside, but that's a stock that's holding up extremely well. And, you know, every time there's a hurricane that comes through, <laughs> through the, the East Coast and the Gulf, and you get fires, um, you know, Again, I can tell you, I am so happy that I have a generator now because they, their SC, uh, Southern California Edison is turning off the power at times when they're high winds for fire prevention. And I hear, boy, the power goes out 45 seconds later, on comes my generator and nothing is melting in the freezer and nothing yeah. in the refrigerator and the whole thing. So it's a very, very nice, nice thing to have. And I don't, I don't think our, our grid, our electric grid is going to get better anytime soon. So Probably it's, have that as a backup. Let's go to the next stock. And this is uh, KB Homes, uh, ticker symbol KBH. Yeah, there's, and this whole group has gotten, has, has come on recently. Um, and you can see, look at the base on this one. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, um, that looks about a little over two years of what we can see from that old high back uh, in the high 30s. And uh, seems to be setting up well. And you look at Lennar had a great report the other day. It's also setting up. Um, there's Toll Brothers. Um, there's D.H. Horton. Um, that, yeah, see a lot of them nice long bases. Yeah. And with you know, I, all I keep on reading is how many people are moving out of the, out of the cities or they want to become, get more rural. Well, these guys, these home builders are meeting that need and that might go on for a, a while longer. But then there's so many stocks that are related to the home building industry that there are a lot of other ones that could do well. Uh, floor and decor is one, uh, Zillow is another one. Um, Redfin is, you know, is, is a, uh, is a brokerage, um, real estate brokerage firm, it's even solar. I mean, there's a lot of different things that are tied to the building industry. So that might be one area of the market that, uh, that could do well in the, in the future here. No, excellent. And, uh, let's see, 
And then uh, we have a couple of uh, gaming stocks here, gambling stocks. Uh, Penn is one, and there's Penn National Gaming. And, and the big thing, uh, what, what these guys did is they, uh, they bought a bunch of bar stool sports. And, and Dave Portnoy is the, the founder of that, and he, he's been all over the news. And this has been a rocket ship. I mean, it went down. It, like, crashed uh, oh. all the way down to $3. Uh, for, I think 30, $30 something dollars down to 3 or $4. All the way now it's at 73 which is uh, yeah. pretty amazing. And what's, what's good about this is that you can see that this is another two-year base. The stock, oh. you know, it got hit all the way down during the, 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 the depths of the market, uh, uh, bear market came all the way up, back to highs, and then spent some time there going sideways. And that's what you want to see when a stock comes off its lows all the way back up to the high. You want to see it drift for a number of weeks. That's what it did. And now it's, it's starting off again. This might, this, I mean, it's extended here. So I, I, would, I would wait till you get some kind of pullback or a new base built. But with all the sports coming back online, I don't do any of this sports betting. Um, but it sounds like a lot of people do. And I, even what it was at the big 10 yesterday or two That's days right. ago, yeah. Yeah, they, they, said, hey, they saw all these other conferences uh, <laughs> on, on the weekend and they're going, what are we doing? <laughs> so, and I, but I would be very surprised if the PAC 12 did that because I, this West coast is, is so. We're, we're going to play a uh, spring ball over here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're going to do, but I, the pressure is, is, I mean, there are lawsuits going on, players yeah. want to play and stuff. Anyway, that beside, that turns into more business for these guys. And then also DraftKings, I guess, is also. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, ticket symbol DKNG. Here's, here's yeah, DraftKings. Look at uh, that. Look at that nice little base, stock yeah. breaking out on volume. I mean, that's, that's sort of a, a textbook, yeah, relative strength going into new high ground. Um, so that's another area. So there are some areas that, that are working, and, um, but you just you let the market show you what, what areas are working and, and maybe move some money into those if they have the right setups and, uh, and take the money out of the stocks that are starting to underperform. One of the worst thing you can do is, is is, is start getting so attached to a name that you can never sell it. Yeah. And uh, because some of these things have great moves up, but then boy, they can come down a long, long way and at least sell something. I mean, if you like it long-term, may, maintain some core position, but sell off, you know, especially if you have something on margin or just sell off a, a position that's a little bit too big and move it, move it to the ones that are starting to work. And, no, uh, oh, good. Yeah, and then the last thing is it, it's so important to have these rules that, that, you know, that IBD is always, always pushing. It, it, the rules take the emotion out of the, out of the game, out of, the, out of what you're doing in the market. And you should always be operating on rules because what happens is if you're following rules and you have stocks that are rolling over, one by one, you'll be selling them. And if you can't find anything to buy on the other side or that are setting up, well, then you just have all this cash while the market is either chopping around or in a downtrend. And it's such a great feeling when you're in a lot of cash and everybody else is suffering because the thing is going, going on. Yeah. And you just wait. And sometimes it could be months uh, before the, the thing sets up again. But that's what the rules do. It keep, they keep you out when you should be out and they put you in when you should be in. Now, uh, you mentioned IBD and uh, you, you, have, you have some things to, to show us, some, okay. some nice little uh, artifacts uh, well, that, to, to show us. Well, these are a few things that, um, that, you know, going way back when I was at O'Neill and Company, I mean, this, I, I don't even know what it's called. I mean, it used to be called the NISMI, New Stock Market Ideas. Yeah. What is it called? Focus list? Now? Yeah, now it's a U.S. focus list. Okay, so now this is all the way back in 1979. This is what oh. the old recommendations used to look like. I, got, I must oh. have gotten this. I started in 82, so I must have gotten this out of the trash. When somebody <laughs> out their what were some of the stocks in there? Some of the stocks in there, I mean, there's probably names you wouldn't. Ranger Oil, uh, Raychem, 
uh, Prime Computer. I mean, yes, been, Prime Computer, right? Uh, Premier Industrial Pennzoil. This is when. Wow. Huh. This is when um, you know oil stocks were doing well. Here's Pick and Save. Pick and Save, which was an initial buy at four, is now at nineteen in wow. this in this book. So one of Bill's huge winners, right there. Yeah, it was it was a great winner, but. You know that it was put on at four. I mean, it's it split adjusted, so it was yeah. probably eight dollars. Well, it's split adjusted twice, so it was put on at uh, at sixteen. But that was in March of seventy five, and now it's at nineteen um, in in seventy nine. So three and a half years later, it's not like some of the tech stocks we've right. seen. Right. It's at slow and steady. Uh, yeah. Those things. Um, Oh, there's there's Medtronics in there. I mean, there's wow, there's a wow. lot of a lot of stocks that were being being recommended, but yeah, a lot of oil stocks uh, that I can see through this. Uh, yeah, through which this. makes sense. Yeah, he's just you know they're listening to the market, letting relative strength pick pick a lot of the ideas and putting it in the the book. Right, right. So and but all these buy points, all these recommendations you know, they're the same, we're doing the same thing now. I mean, you guys are, you know, highlighting stocks that have these exact same characteristics. This is, you know, this is now 40 years ago and Incredible. it hasn't, thing. it hasn't changed. It's the same yeah. thing. Um, this is always fun. I've got a few of these from when I was there, but here's, here's a, a record book of the greatest stock market winners since 1970 through 1983 so a lot of great big winners and it has and this is what you should be doing too with your you know you should be keeping a book of your purchases buys and your sells and you know this has the before picture and then the after picture of yep. what is you know is what what happened to the stock on the move and it, you can you have to study these things over and over again because they give you you want to get that in your mind of what these great winning stocks look like. Um, here's a, this is something, this is when I actually, we started a mutual fund at William O'Neill and company. And this is on the, the front page. This is on the business section of, uh, of the LA times. And there's awesome. Bill and there's me behind him. That's, that's the trading the trading room uh, at the old company when it was on LaGrange in West Los Angeles. And that was 1992 and ran that for about five years, the new wow. USA growth fund. And so that's, that's, you know, I should probably take a little bit better care of these things. <laughs> yeah, they're yellowing and I've got them in boxes and things like that. But then this is, this is great. Here's the, here's the investors business daily. This is the original, this is the first day of print. When it was called Investors Daily. Investors, yeah, it wasn't Investors Business. And this was April, April 9th, 1984. So now it's Investors Business Daily. And the format, very, very different, um, you know, very different than what exists now. And then I even have, I mean, they were doing pre, uh, they were doing pre press run or press runs for, um, to just practice. And here's right. got a, you know, Friday, March 9th. This was a month before, uh, before the original one, uh, the first day of, of printing. So they were trying all sorts of formats and different things. And then the last thing I've got, I mean, there's probably a bunch of people who still have this, but I found this um, in, in a drawer, but here's the, my original investing to win tape that I did, I, I don't even know when I did this, um, some, sometime in the late 80s or so. And this one used to be sent out with, um, I think you would get a subscription to the newspaper and they would send yeah. it out to free. So there must be, you know, <laughs> thousands of copies out there <laughs> in drawers that people just kind of threw them away and no one can use them anymore. Right, exactly. No, this one is still in its original cellophane. So this is like a collector's <laughs> item. It's like a baseball card that hasn't been opened. Put it on eBay. <laughs> yeah, and, but no one will bid on it because no one has got a machine to work it anymore. So I guess I think you can find that on YouTube. 
uh, the audio. Maybe, yeah. So, so David, w w one last thing here. Uh, so you are going to be, I mentioned it before, you're going to be part of the Master Trader program. Right. Uh, that's in November. Uh, it's an excellent, it's an excellent program. And, uh, to, you know, just br briefly speak about it and, you know, uh, what, what you guys go over there. Well, it's, it, you know, this, this year, I mean, it's, it's always been held live in, uh, in Myrtle Beach where Mark lives. And uh, this year, um, because of COVID and travel and all the health uh, regulations and stuff that we're all doing, we're doing this online. And so Mark and I have been recording the same it, it, segments of this and we've been doing it so far over the last couple of weeks. And uh, it goes through the entire process of, you know, when to buy a stock, how to buy a stock, what to look for, what should the earnings be like? I mean, risk factors. We we go we take you through the entire progression of a of a stock's move um, to the top to the to the selling selling points, um, and we, it's just we really put it all together, and it's it very very comprehensive. This is something I didn't have even when I was started started to work at William O'Neill and Company. There was no there was no how to make money in stocks book. Yeah. Every once in a while, Bill would give a little a lecture for employees about the market and stuff, but it wasn't set out like it is here and, and, and it is in IBD and with Mark's course. So I, it's, I, you know, it's, it's very good and your head will be spinning by the time you get through all, I guess it's five days, four days of instruction and a fifth day of, of live trading. So, um, very, very comprehensive and, and it should really help anybody who's just starting out or even somebody who's been around for a while. Perfect, yeah. And Mark Smith is a sponsor of the Master Trader program. I'll, I'll be there uh, online this year. It's always fun going to Myrtle Beach because I get, get to hang out with David and Mark and, and all the attendees. But yeah. this time we'll all, we'll all be online, but we'll do a live uh, uh, trading day and uh, we'll be going over Mark Smith, a bunch of screens that David and Mark like to use too. So uh, thanks, David, so much for joining us today. Okay, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Next week, we will have Larry Adam on the show. Larry is the Chief Investment Officer of Raymond James for Private Client Group. So that's it for this week on Investing with IBD. I'm Arusha Paris, and thanks for listening. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.